Welcome to Cartoonist Kayfabe. My name is Ed Piscor. I'm Jim Rogg. And I'm Brian Moss. And this is Brian Moss's collection of Ren and Stimpy production art from the animated series. But first, these videos are brought to you by the comic books that we make. Jimmy has Hulk Grand Design Monster and Madness in stores now. It's going to get the Grand Design uh, treatment in its book collection form early 2023. Street Angel Deadliest Girl Alive trade paperback is back in print from Image Comics. Get your hands on that. The great Brian Moss, man, we're visiting his hometown, Columbus, Ohio, and he is the illustrator of this tremendous accomplishment from Abrams, The Eightfold Path. He's the illustrator behind that sucker. He's a full-on cartoonist, too, though, man, so get your hands on Outer Heaven. Strange Things Moss, one word is his uh, handle, online, Instagram, Etsy. You'll be able to get his comics that way. And your boy Eddie P, you know him already, man. Red Room, the Antisocial Network, Red Room Trigger Warnings. These book collections are in stores right now, completely self-contained. Uh, give these comics a shot if you dig one, grab the other. And there is more Red Room coming to you in 2023. Without further ado, first off, Mossy, mm -hmm. let's talk about we, it. We, we got hundreds of pages of stuff here. Yeah. What is this? How'd you get it? Yep, yeah, let's talk about it. So what happened, I acquired this collection. This, guys, this actually is kind of like, pay attention to what I'm going to tell you guys because this will give you guys some really good insight and make you feel optimistic that there's still stuff out there that you can get. So what happened is that, you know, I'm on Instagram. I follow a few people. And so I had this dude out of like California I buy from. Um, and he just flipped shit. But what happened is that he had this sitting around yeah. in his storage forever. And he said he bought it from a storage unit. Um, it's about 175 pieces. <laughs> and it's all written stimpy. And so I told him that I wanted the whole thing. And he sold it to me um, at a really good price. And so here we are now seeing history. So Ed and Jim, what was your first introduction to Ren and Stimpy. MTV, for sure, man. Yeah. Like, about 7.30 yeah. uh, after um, Remote Control or some shit yeah. like that. Before Speed Racer. Mm -hmm. Saw this stuff, man. That's where you get to see the uncensored whizzing on the electric fence episode, all that. And then I, I became confused. I'm like, it's on Nickelodeon 2? Chicken and Egg, man. Which What's the legit? But it was like in tandem, right? And looking at these super tight lines, this is an era in animation where you get this like confident stroke on paper and it is transcribed onto the acetate that's not inked. You know, this ain't Disney anymore, man, where you're inking on acetate over top of the key illustration. So, so it is paramount to have that perfect line. Uh, you see on some of these guys, and I bet you, man, I bet you put this under John Kay's face, he's gonna be like, oh, that's uh, John Smith. Oh, yeah, you can point out those lines specifically. Yeah, yeah, because I see some dudes are using blue line underneath Mm -hmm. And that's non-repro on Xeroxes as well. So, in effect, you see the blue. In effect, the pencil line is ink is inking. Right. Exactly. Yeah, the perfect line. I found this stuff like pretty checked out of animation at the time, and probably randomly flipping where you get those like super close-ups of some gross. And I'm like, <laughs> yes. what is this stuff? Shouts to Bill Ray. In fact, let's look at one of those, man. Yeah. Uh, it looks like a Bill Ray gouache painting or something, man, mm -hmm. where you get that crazy lighting, you know, the camera would like stick on this for a couple of seconds and then you, you go on to the next. It's so beautiful to me seeing this pile of work and thinking about what goes into an episode of any cartoon, but I mean like every piece is sort of this expert piece. You talk about the, per the pencil line, it doesn't need inked anymore, it's because mm -hmm. it's like this perfect line, like I don't even know how you draw a line like that. Right? Yeah. So um, a lot of this actually inspired a lot of my recent work with Outer Heaven because of that line quality. Um, and what I learned is like that line is so bold and confident that like why do you have to ink it? You know, almost yes. inking it takes something away from it because you're covering up the beauty of that line. Um, now we know why in traditional animation so that, you know, it's legible. But yeah, some of these lines, well all the lines in the work are so sexy. This is so cool, man. This is the original, and then they Xerox it a bunch to extend them and, you know, change little... Yeah, make, make your tiny adjustments. That's kind of cool, too, is seeing, like, several of these things where it's almost imperceptible what the change is in order to make the animation, but it's still that perfect drawing. Yeah, totally. It's wild. These pieces are a revelation, man. It's like on construction paper underneath. Like, it's, like, literally that construction paper that you would get in pads mm -hmm. when you were in second grade. Very with, pulpy. With other construction paper just cut up. Mm -hmm. I feel like that's probably like one of those like UPA 
Gene Deitch, fucking Mr. Magoo techniques from the 50s, because that's what John Kay and the Spumco crew were. The idea was, how about this, guys? We make a fucking cartoon that's by cartoonists. It ain't selling no Thundercats toy, and fuck your G.I. Joes. We're cartoonists. We got into the game because we like that Mr. Magoo, mm-hmm. you know, old school shit. Let's let's do it, and yeah, this yeah. and this is the result. Yeah, the important thing about this collection is actually like pretty historically important because if you notice, um, a lot of these pages are really damaged, and that's because they make produce so much of this that it's almost superfluous. Yeah. So to sawdust, have this, like like I've heard it called <laughs> sawdust. It's a byproduct of the end goal, which, which is, is the show, which is insane, right? Oh yeah. To think it's, that this stuff would be discarded. It's so good to have somebody that keeps this stuff because yeah. a lot of it is discarded. You know, yeah. they used to they used to clean off the backs of the cells and reuse them for other yeah. stuff. So like some of this stuff just flat out doesn't exist. Exactly. And in a weird way, it's what you have in common with like original comic art. You know, so mm-hmm. much of that stuff's just gone, destroyed, lost, given away, whatever. Preserving this is really yeah, it, it, it's it's excellent whenever you find that. Totally, yeah. So it was important to um, have this as a complete collection from like to buy it all. Yeah, um, just to like make sure it's preserved and taken care of. You know what I mean? This here. Oh. <laughs> Isn't that great? It's so good, so <laughs> tight. And then uh, when you have the actual color cell, you have that amazing. You know, you paint it on the back. You get this. The strokes and it's that it's that very specific every every now and then man I'll, I'll look on the websites and just see like what still is available on these mm-hmm. animation centric sites there is less and less cell vinyl paint that's available I think there's some some company in uh, the UK that's mixing up some batches and stuff mm-hmm. but it is it is almost all but gone yeah at this point man and the whole punch like look at this it's a three hole punch it's not even the Ames thing, because right. that, that hole puncher is a thousand dollars. You know, so specific, and it's not like you know, mass. It's not mass produced. Exactly. Stuff. Yeah, and again, going back to that idea of similarities to comic art is like it's just not produced this way anymore. You know, like there aren't even cells for for right. most of the cartoons that you would see today. I used to fixate on this stuff. Like when you have two cells over top of each other, you could see a shadow yes. on the t- on the uh-huh. TV. Yeah. Which that actually that kind of technique has bled over into comics in a lot of ways with the Gaussian blur effect, you know? Yeah. It's kind of the same kind of consequence. Yeah, we were talking off camera that, that you've done a little bit of that. I did some of that in the Hulk <laughs> grand design. Yeah. So yeah, it is interesting. Where you're almost emulating what would have been a mistake right, exactly. that you saw on TV as a kid that you were staring too close. Oh yeah, I remember you doing that on that uh, aphrodisiac. Piece. Start start bringing yeah. that stuff in. Yeah, it's cool to see the, the blocks of ice all the way up to the Bill Ray painting, you know, yeah. like like see yeah. that development. Just pencil sketches and shading and all of these things to uh, to make it work. And this painting, by the way, is no slouch. Like to get that effect, like to make it feel like it's ice, and it's really nuanced. Actually, it's not just like I would blow that out. I would just go hard than light, you know. But that's actually you can see like the mm-hmm. back side of the ice on there. Unbelievable! It really is great. Like the side where we're getting like the darker back yeah. part of the body. Yeah. That's and, cool. Yeah, how do you do that? It's like this is the natural color of, of Stimpy, so now you have to get it on different planes up through a block of translucent ice. Yeah. Put that dry brush to sell you on the sheen. And even the 3D of that little flake of snow, man. And, and, and you know, those guys, like John Kay's the guy that was like co directing, working on that um, Mighty Mouse episode with the bat bat who's sniffing coke right, or whatever exactly. the fuck. Exactly. Man, those oh are coke God. lines, yo. Yeah, that's <laughs> totally <laughs> It didn't stop there. <laughs> it continued. That's it. You know, those guys are doing that shit. Right. By the way, like, I'm looking at our monitor. <laughs> Some tangents. Yeah, let's get all not as dirty as all you sickos at home think. Always cool, man, when you get a couple of sequentials. <laughs> Definitely. That's a nice part of this collection, too, going through some of these drawings, is having the three or four drawings in a row. Yeah. Like, the bending and stretching and all of it. And you got the... So, these are, like, key pieces, right? Mm-hmm. So, we'll have the episodes. So, we got... Um, that one's a little hard to read. Let me grab one that's a little yeah. easier. Yeah. Well, I'm looking at the specific, like... This is drawing, thir- you know, something 31 to 16. Yeah. So, there's a lot in between here to get the little... Mm-hmm. So here's a good example of how to read these. I'm, I'm new to this part, so you'll see where it says uh, production. Uh, RS is written in Stimpy Season 5. Um, assuming 3 would be... Scene, scene yeah. uh, 37. Mm-hmm. 
And we saw some other images like from this, and you, right. could, and you could see like color holds, right? Color holds because it's not a uh, black line that's going to be like the iris for for Ren. Right, you know, exactly. Those are, those are colored lines, so you communicate that in the final piece. Whenever you're taking this into Xerox, it ain't going to print. You know, it's going to print that red. Right. Yeah, that's a really nice uh, call out. Yeah, seeing seeing those like little bits of technique in here is fun. And Ed, whenever you're looking at these two and you're thinking like, okay, you know, 16, 31, a lot of drawings in between, that's why you get pieces. Mm. It's not complete drawings because you've got those probably represented in, in, you know, drawing 15 or drawing 18 or something like that. So it's just whichever pieces you need and it's just part of the design. It's and it makes it even thing. more disturbing because that means that <laughs> towel is staying still and just that pelvis is moving. <laughs> that's going to be a very wet towel. Oh, man. So like he's all done. Think about how much you have to rely on the, the your work partners, right? Because they have to understand because that you're responsible for a lot of things, right? And you have to memorize these things. These things are so nuanced that like the team has to be so focused. You know, it creates a different language almost. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the, you know, you're you're doing scenes, and uh, I get into these rabbit holes, man. Like when, when I'm watching um, like a like a like a Disney like feature animation, I'll just go through stuff and I'll watch. Snow White, and then I'll go on YouTube and watch documentaries that show the, the nine old men talking about stuff. And I remember, like, it was, like, Cinderella or Sleeping Beauty where, like, one of the artists was, like, tasked with, with Sleeping Beauty. Oh you know, one, one, one guy who looks the most well-rested, probably got the live the longest, <laughs> right. is doing, like, the little fucking... You know, squirrels and shit that are right. around. But the guy, the but the guy who, who would work on, you know, the blonde chick, I forget which princess, right, could draw three drawings in a day on a feature film. That's it. With, because yeah. of the, dra the concerns of the drapery and getting that right. Yeah. Three drawings in a day. Now, those That's are key it. shots, and there are people who are doing those in-betweens, man, to get from point A to B. But that is labor-intensive. Exactly. Well said. And some of the stuff you, we, we all remember, you know, you got the George Licker. Like, I can, like, I haven't watched it in for a while. Yeah. But, like, I can vividly remember. Like, that's how iconic this stuff is. It's like one picture it explodes into your mind the complete episode. Yes. That's how, like, you know, it's, dedicated they were. Yeah, it's so visual. So it's not like, like, I let Beavis and Butthead run mm -hmm. while I'm working once a year. Every episode, once a year. Just like, because yeah. I was drawing in my sketchbooks. When that shit was on TV. Totally. This is such a visual show, and there's so much sight gags, mm -hmm. and there's literally not talking in a lot of every episode. Right. So you just can't run it. Like, I don't feel like any cartoonist knows it that as well as, like, Beavis and Butthead or something totally. for those reasons. It's not dialogue-driven. Right. Um, one of the great things about, like, John Kay's, like, innovation to a lot of this was the idea of, like, no image is the same and like to assume I can I mean they quote him as being the innovator of that like new expressions constantly yes yeah, and you yeah, see no that bullshit. yeah so you see that in these drawings like they still carry that discipline in the late seasons right I think that's why you know you see one image and mm -hmm. it calls to mind an episode or the scene yeah. because of that distinct like approach of make each of these drawings special and stand out mm-hmm in my oldest sketchbooks, and my it, it, like when I was using composition notebook, I would draw. I I I would draw them. You remember that era where it was like the um, Looney Tunes would have like crisscross outfits, like yeah, that yeah, works, yeah, like yeah, satin yeah, pants yeah, and shit. shit. Yeah, like I did uh, MC Ren, <laughs> and I would like, Are you have them with like finger rings. Yeah, and yeah that's stuff. awesome. Yeah, <laughs> the Nike swooshes for the eyes. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's very accurate. Like, what range from that last drawing to this drawing, right? You know, to be the same character. And, 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 and the balance and the weight is something you always have to notice on, in good animation. You know, there's that, those Walter Foster books. Uh, I forget the name of the guy. We're going to have to do an episode on it, man. Uh, but it's like the guide to animation. Mm -hmm. And he stresses the balance. Yes. Like, you have to have... Just because it's cartoony doesn't mean that it's lawless or work. Exactly. Absolutely. Yeah, it was interesting because, like, um, growing up, this is the kind of stuff I first had access to. Not Rin City, but cartoons. So, like, my style, this was always easy to do because it was, like, my first style. And then when you, like, and I could, like, do it when I was younger. But then when I came back around to studying this stuff later, I'm like, now that actually is really hard. You know what I mean? So it's like a lot of times what is perceived as simple 
is the most complex. It's still well balanced, you yeah. know. Like, what a shade. <laughs> it is. Yeah, that weight thing is a big, big, big deal. Mm -hmm. And I often think, like, some of my favorite <laughs> comic book artists have that weight. I remember, <laughs> I remember Billy West. Every to his go, to, his go to whenever people ask him to like go, go, you know, like do Ren and Simpy, he'll be like, "Hey, Ren, can you button me?" Yeah. <laughs> Look how big his hands are. It's such an exaggeration. That's ridiculous. Shouts to Bob Camp. You know, he's a dude I've been wanting to get uh, interviews with ever, ever since we fucking started this channel. Totally. That'll be gnarly. Teaches at SVA. It's fun to see these images, too. Like, they're all scattered at this point. What's some of that kinky nipple shit but, but over some there? Some of these images, like, in pencil form and then color form, really. This is really disturbing me. <laughs> yeah, that one was wild. Oh, actually, this one... I wonder if this is from that one episode where it was, um, they, they said it went too far. It's he put on like a fat suit and they beat the shit out of them. <laughs> I think that's actually might be from that time. I see. Fun color on that. Then we got some goof troop in the, yeah. in the mix. <laughs> yeah, randomly. It's a random goof troop yeah. piece. Yeah, that's the result of you buy these uh, lots <laughs> yeah. and, and you never know what might be tucked in the middle. But even if you go a couple pieces back real quick, Ed, to uh -huh. that, there was one with a thicker pencil. Yeah, this right here. This is an example of like, you know, that might be a different artist yeah, working absolutely. on it. You know, but that's like more, less nuanced, something that we know, you know what I mean? Like if, we could point it out. When you listen to enough direct um, co audio commentaries on the old DVDs and stuff, the producers will call guys out like, oh, that's a, that's a so-and-so. Right. Um, you know, we, we would have... Uh, you know, so and so he was in Torrey. The best smoke in the business, right? And, and, and shit like that. <laughs> exactly. He's an effects man. Yep. Great dust. Yeah, it'd be the most arbitrary thing, <laughs> but you got to do it. Yeah. And, and if you don't do it right, it looks real off. Yeah. I feel like there's a lot you could take from this into comic book art. Absolutely. You know, like this kind of distinct body. We talk body language all the time, yeah. and it's like this is extreme examples of it, where like every drawing is expressive. Yeah. It counts, right? You know, they make it count. And that's, I think it's something that you can learn. It's like going back to that discipline. It's like, no, no, the drawing is important. You know, don't, don't deny the public of, you know, of your skill. Yeah, and, you know, making it count is like, look at how few lines there are. Mm -hmm. We're not getting cross-hatching or rendering mm -hmm. or anything to hide behind. Yep. Like, yeah. if there's a line on here, it's got to describe yeah. something. It's and it's got to describe it well. Yeah. Yeah, so you've got to make it count. Yep. It's got to be sharp. You get one, one chance. That George Licker, man, I tell you, <laughs> fucking John K's been selling that character for twenty five years. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe it'll happen one day, John. It actually is funny. Yeah, it is a good character, but it's, it's just it's the, so personal. And yeah, it, yeah, the the pilot, like we know it off by by heart. Like the first episode, like you know, the pilot. It's <laughs> there's a there's a. Disc like dad would go to the grocery store and would get discount canned foods, but there's no label and you don't know what it is, and you get to eat one of those cans a day for dinner. It's like war rations. <laughs> <laughs> and I do think that that was you know John Cape. I think he might have. Yeah, yeah. That, he's he's of that discipline. That, that's yeah. auto. That's auto bio, man. Yeah, exactly. Amazing. Jimmy and I are coming out to CXE uh, Cartoon Crossroads Columbus. Had no idea we were going to bump into, you know, hundreds of Ren and Stimpy animation cells. And it's all thanks to the great Brian Moss, man. Thank you so much, man. No doubt. Appreciate you guys. Let's get the heck out of here. K Fabers, like, follow, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Hit the bell. We'll notify you when new vids are available. Jimmy, tell the people what's out there, man. Hulk Grand Design, Monster Madness, in stores now. Pick that up at your local comic shop. A retelling of the Hulk's history. And the oversized collection with 40 extra pages will be out in January. So pre-order that one right now wherever you get your books. Street Angel, Deadliest Girl Alive, back in print after almost a year of absence from the shelves. Add that to your collection while this print run lasts. And uh, follow me on patreon.com slash jimrug where you can see a lot more of my comics, art, uh, download some of my out-of-print zines and minis, and more at my Patreon. Be Moss. We got Eightfold Path uh, through Abrams slash Megascope. So definitely check that out. Worked really hard on it. A uh, shout out also to the crew and the help from Columbus artists who helped me work on this book. Check out their names in the back when you buy the book. Also, we got Outer Heaven. Uh, that one's available. Uh, my handle online is Strange Things Moss. 
So you can hit me up on Etsy, Instagram, and also my Patreon. Red Room. The anti-social network. Red Room trigger warnings. Out in the wild as we speak. Murder on the dark web for fun and profit is the name of the game. And each of these Red Room books is completely self-contained. Four stories in each. About 60 to 70 pages of extra material in each of these books that you won't find anywhere else. Uh, I have a Patreon going on as well where I'm serializing new Red Room content that is not uh, published yet. All of this material is up there, plus the new Red Room stuff. Three bucks for the archive. I have a link tree where you can get to everything. Jimmy, what else do we have out there? Subscribe to the Cartoonist Kayfabe newsletter at the links below this video. You can also find Cartoonist Kayfabe t-shirts, merchandise, mugs, and more at our spread shop in the link below this video. Another great way to support the Cartoonist Kayfabe channel. Given those marching orders, will be on our way. Read more comics.